Welcome to the second and last module of our corn uses lesson. As we've alluded to previously, there are a multitude of uses for corn grain. In this lesson, we will explore the primary uses of corn that include both the grain and the plant. In this section, we will examine the way corn is used in the U.S. Remember that dent corn is the type most widely grown and used. We will first discuss the primary uses of dent corn grain, followed by uses of the corn plant that don't involve the grain. Number one use of corn grain is livestock feed, so we'll talk about that first. Just like people, animals need food to provide energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals. Corn provides these essential nutrients inexpensively. Here's a review of what corn grain contains. The starch, sugar, and oil in corn provide energy for animals. The grain also contains nutrients such as protein, fiber, and minerals. The livestock that eat corn grain includes dairy cattle, beef cattle, swine, and poultry, which includes chicken and turkey. This is how the feed segment breaks down by type of livestock. Here is a comparison of the two most common feed ingredients, corn and soybean. They differ in the amounts of protein, fat, and carbohydrates that they contain. Together, dairy and beef cattle consume 44% of the corn used for livestock feed. Many cattle eat forages, which are the herbage of plants such as grasses and alfalfa, as the main part of their diet. Corn and its byproducts can be used in addition to forages to feed cattle and can be used to fatten beef cattle before slaughter. 30% of the corn used for livestock feed goes to poultry. Poultry feeds are mostly composed of cereal grains like corn and soybean. Other grains can be used, but corn is the most common component in the diets of poultry. 26% of the corn used for livestock feed goes to swine. A mix of corn and soybean is the most common pig feed. As with poultry, corn is the most common grain fed to swine. Livestock generally are not fed whole corn kernels. To promote digestibility, whole kernels are usually ground before they are included in poultry or swine rations and cracked or rolled for cattle rations. Swine and cattle can also consume byproducts produced during ethanol production. Americans consume many pounds of beef, pork, and poultry per capita. Here is the consumption for 2012. It takes many pounds of corn and other feed to produce all this meat. In addition to 168 pounds of meat, Americans on average also consume 250 eggs and over 600 pounds of dairy products. Again. All of these chickens and dairy cattle need to be fed many pounds of corn and other feed. Because we have corn, other foods such as meat, eggs, and dairy products are available to us inexpensively. Ethanol is the second most common use of corn. 
Some crops, such as corn, can be used to produce fuel and are called biofuel crops. Unlike fossil fuels, biofuels are a renewable resource. Corn grain is the part of the corn plant used to produce biofuel. When producing fuel, corn is the crop most frequently used. The target product is ethanol, which is also called ethyl alcohol. The chemical structure is shown here. Ethanol is an alcohol, the same one that is in alcoholic beverages such as beer or wine. To produce ethanol, first the starch in corn is broken down into sugars, then ethanol is produced when yeast consume the sugar. Corn grain is brought to a plant such as this one for ethanol production. Ethanol plants are located near where corn is grown to minimize transportation costs. Distillers grains are a byproduct of ethanol production. It is what remains after ethanol is removed. Distillers grains do not go to waste. They are used for livestock feed. They contain protein, fat, fiber, vitamins, and minerals, which are essential nutrients in animal feed. Billions of pounds of distillers grains are produced each year. Corn is marketed in bushels which is equivalent to 56 pounds. One single bushel can produce 2.8 gallons of fuel ethanol along with 17.5 pounds of distiller's grains. Distiller's grains aren't the only byproduct. There are two waste products as a result of yeast fermentation. One is ethanol. The other is carbon dioxide, which can be used to add carbonation to beverages. Shown here are bubbles of carbon dioxide in a soft drink. Ethanol is not used for fuel in its pure form. It is blended with gasoline, usually at a 10% ethanol blend, but some vehicles are designed to run on a higher blend, such as 85%, also called E85. Ethanol emits fewer air pollutants as compared to gasoline and is renewable. Ethanol from corn is mostly used for fuel, but some is used for beverages and industrial uses. The amount of corn used for ethanol has increased dramatically since 2000. The third most common use of U.S. corn is for export. We export or sell 16% of the corn we grow to other countries. They import corn to use for the same purposes as we do, mostly animal feed, some industrial usages, and some food. Corn exports are good for our economy and help feed the world. We are the largest exporter of corn, and corn is very important to our economy. Countries in South America and Eastern Europe are potential competitors for corn exports in the future. So where is all this exported corn going to? Here are the countries with major corn imports. Japan once used imported corn mostly for livestock feed, but now uses more for industrial and starch production. Mexico produces a lot of corn itself, but that goes to food uses, 
so imported corn is used for livestock feed. South Korea also uses corn for livestock feed. Sweeteners are another use for corn grain. We love our sweets. Sugars from sugarcane and sugar beet have traditionally been the main source of sugar in our diets. Here is the number of pounds of sugar from sugarcane and sugar beet that each American consumed per year. Over time, more sugar from corn, such as high fructose corn syrup, has been used in sweeteners. We will explain more about high fructose corn syrup shortly. Corn is also the source for other types of sugars, such as glucose and dextrose, which are used as food ingredients. In total, Americans consumed 130 pounds of sugar from all sources, including honey, in 2011. Actually, this is down from a peak of 151 pounds in 1999. Dent corn is not naturally sweet in the way we normally think of sweet. That may make you wonder where corn sweeteners come from. While corn doesn't have a lot of sugar, it does have high levels of starch. As we have seen, much of the kernel is endosperm, which is mostly starch. When starch is broken down, it turns into its simpler subunits, which are sugars. When corn starch is treated with enzymes, a sweet syrup called corn syrup is formed. Corn syrup undergoes additional processing to increase the sweetness, and then it becomes high fructose corn syrup, which can have either 42 or 55 percent fructose. Because high fructose corn syrup has more sweetening power, it is a more valuable product that is found in many foods. Sugar and high fructose corn syrup are both used to add sweetness to various foods. You have probably used table sugar at home to bake or sweeten your coffee. Manufacturers, however, will often use high fructose corn syrup instead of table sugar in processed foods. What makes them different? Table sugar can be derived from sugar beets or sugar cane, while high fructose corn syrup is only from corn. Table sugar is a solid, and high fructose corn syrup is a thick liquid. Sucrose is a disaccharide, while high fructose corn syrup is two monosaccharides, fructose and glucose. The monosaccharides of glucose and fructose are the simplest type of sugars. Sucrose is a disaccharide because it is composed of two of these simple sugars, glucose and fructose. Sugar is a single compound composed of fructose and glucose at a 50 to 50 ratio, while high fructose corn syrup is similar with a composition in that it contains both fructose and glucose, but separately. The ratios of fructose to glucose can vary. Higher fructose formulations are also made but they are less common. Both are similar in sweetness. High fructose corn syrup began to replace table sugar as a food ingredient for several reasons. It has similar sweetening power to sugar and honey. Just like table sugar, it enhances flavors. 
It also helps products stay fresher, keeps baked goods soft, provides browning in baked goods, and gives soda pop a longer shelf life. Most importantly, it is inexpensive. Have you ever eaten candy corn and wondered about its origin? It was invented a long time ago in the 1880s in Philadelphia. It does contain corn in its ingredients in the form of corn syrup, but it was named after its similarity in appearance to corn. In fact, its first name was chicken feed, as corn was commonly fed to chickens during that time period. Eventually, the name was changed to the more appealing candy corn. Originally, it was a candy eaten year-round, but after World War II, it became associated with Halloween as a result of advertising. When corn is processed into starch, it can be used as a food product such as the cornstarch that might be in your cupboard. However, corn in starch form is more often used in industrial products. Starch can be isolated by grinding and separating it out from the endosperm, composed of almost all starch, and used in industrial products. By modifying the starch physically and or chemically, a variety of products can be created. Cornstarch is a common ingredient in foods and is used as a thickening agent in food. However, it also has a multitude of industrial uses, such as in fireworks, crayons and chalk, rubber tires, soap, candles, cosmetics. Printer ink, aspirin, antibiotics, wallpaper, sandpaper, adhesives, detergents, diapers, baby powder, and insecticides. Biodegradable plastic products, such as those shown here, are other items made from cornstarch. Maybe you had corn on the cob for dinner last night or cornflakes for breakfast this morning. Corn is a component of many of the foods we eat. Corn wasn't always prevalent in our diets. In 1918, during World War I, the U.S. government encouraged Americans to eat foods made with more plentiful corn, as shown in this poster, as opposed to the previously more commonly used wheat. We will give some examples of different foods that are made of corn. Foods can be made from the whole grain, the endosperm, the germ, or the bran. These are examples of foods where the whole kernel or whole grain of corn is used. Most or all the starch, sugar, fiber, protein, and oil present in the corn grain would be present in these foods. These foods are derived from either dent or flour corn. Other types of corn, such as popcorn and sweet corn, also use the whole grain for these foods. In addition to food products that use the whole corn grain, food products such as these listed here can be made from different corn grain components. Recall that the endosperm is the starchy part inside the kernel. The endosperm is used in the widest variety of products, including these that are listed. Additionally, as we covered in a previous section, foods made with sweeteners such as corn syrup are also derived from the endosperm. Have you ever wondered what exactly are cornflakes? Of course, it's obvious based on the name that cornflakes are made of corn, but what part? Corn flakes may be flattened pieces of endosperm plus other ingredients that are then toasted. Corn flakes can also be made from corn flour in a similar process. Because corn flakes only use part of the corn kernel, they are usually not considered a whole grain product. 
The germ consists of protein and oil, and the oil is used in the foods listed here. The bran is the outside of the kernel and provides fiber and nutrients. It is used in these food products. We've covered all the main uses of corn grain. Now we'll go beyond the use of corn grain and explore uses of the entire corn plant. There are many uses for virtually every other part of the plant and even one use for a fungus that grows on corn. Non-grain uses include utilizing the biomass, also called corn stover, that remains after grain harvest, harvesting immature whole plants for storage of silage, or other specialty uses. Corn is a crop that can grow more than 10 feet tall, so it produces a lot of foliage. It has numerous parts including the tassel, leaves, silk, stalk, husks, and cob. Thus, once the valuable grain is harvested, a large amount of biomass remains. This biomass is called stover. Stover can be harvested after grain harvest. It can be used to produce biomass biofuels or for the various industrial products listed here. This photo shows bales of harvested stover. When stover is harvested, usually only about half of the biomass is removed. The rest is left to protect the soil over winter and add soil organic matter in the spring when it decomposes. Stover can also be used for livestock feed. It doesn't even necessarily have to be harvested. As this photo shows, cattle can graze on the stover directly in the field. Using stover is one way to feed livestock, but there is another way. Silage. One important difference is that corn silage is not grown for grain. The entire corn plant is harvested at an immature stage before the kernels are fully developed. Corn used for silage is harvested before it is fully mature. The corn plants are chopped and stored anaerobically in specialized structures such as silos or silo bags, then fermented or pickled to produce organic acids, and then preserved. It is then fed to livestock. Livestock animals can eat the cob from corn, and in one case, so do people. Baby corn is harvested before the ear is fertilized. Any corn variety, sweet, dent, or other, can be baby corn if the ear is harvested soon enough. Just like sweet corn, baby corn would be considered a vegetable rather than a grain. It is used in Asian cuisines such as in stir fries or salads. To continue our theme that every single part of the corn plant is useful, consider corn silk. Corn silk is becoming a popular ingredient in cosmetics and as an herbal supplement. It is known to provide allantoin, a chemical compound that is a natural antioxidant and moisturizing component. Native Americans used corn silk to treat various ailments. We're not done with all the uses of corn. There's even a use for a disease of corn. One type of fungus attacks corn cobs and forms a growth. It is called smut in English, or huit la coche in Spanish. Before you deem this fungus delicacy a no-go for something you would eat, remember that mushrooms are also a fungus. Under normal circumstances in a field of corn, however, corn smut is undesirable as it is a pathogen. Obviously, there will not be any grain harvested from this ear.
We've covered all three sections of the Corn Uses lesson. To learn more about corn, please view our other lessons. This is the end of our two-part lesson on corn uses. Thank you for watching.